our service today. We'd also like to welcome everybody who is watching online now and who will be watching later on on YouTube. And, excuse me, in the way of announcements, I have a clipboard for our fellowship hour hosts. Uh, we need folks to sign up to bring goodies because we all like goodies. <laughs> Found on page 2208 in our. No, no. What? I think we have them all. Mine is 714. I know who I have to use. Okay. That's what I got to this What do you have? That's what I have. This I one? know who I'm going to use. Okay. Here's Sorry. One. Here's one. I scare me. I don't know. I try hard. I try hard to scare everybody. It's no job. <laughs> Okay, back to square one. <laughs> Our intro is I know whom I have believed in. It's on page 714 in your hymnal. <laughs> surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Life is around us, even in the memories of ghosts and loved ones long gone. Death is but the other side of the coin of life. Hope is the other side of the coin of despair. 
Unity is but the other side of the coin of division. <coughs> Flip a coin. Choose your side. For life and hope await on us on the other side. <coughs> In the fire and the flames. In the division and the despair, I rise to rise to challenge and invite us. In the shadows and the sorrow, God walks alongside to lift us up. In this moment, we gather together to worship, to pray, to sing, and to lament. We gather on this blessed journey of life, death, and resurrection. Let us pray. Christ of mysterious paradox, enter the paradoxes of our lives. Divide us when false unity divides us from you. Unify us when false division separates us from one another. Connect with us so securely that we may connect with one another in the power of your Holy Spirit as we worship together this day. Amen. Our next hymn is How Firm a Foundation, and it is found on page 529. Gladys? Prayers for the Guardian Schwinn family. 
Prayers for the Darlene Schwen family. Um, she passed away Friday night. Right? I'll uh, share some joys with the rock saga as we go into life. I uh, got to uh, be at a gender identity party last Friday night oh. for my youngest daughter and her husband, Tanner. And didn't know anything about her, how it works and everything, but I guess what happened is that when she had her last ultrasound, the technician noticed that it was boy or girl, or figured she did, the technician did. And then they put it, uh, out a card, a blue or a pink card, and congratulations, it's a boy or a girl. They seal it up in the, in the envelope. And Mackenzie and Tanner didn't even know. Even Grandma didn't know. Grandpa, of course, doesn't know. And uh, so uh, we had the party, and, there, and friends and family all showed up. And then how they did it at that party is they, uh, uh, Mackenzie and Tanner have two big chocolate lavenders. And in fact, it was, so you, it was at Mackenzie and Tanner's wedding that two Labradors, they have so well trained, they laid right at McKinsey's feet during the whole ceremony of the wedding. So pretty good dogs. And so Grandma, Tanner's mom, took the two dogs back into the garage, and then they, she opened the envelope and seen if it was blue or pink, and then she put uh, helium balloons tied into the collars of oh. the dogs, the appropriate color. And we were all standing out in the patio in the back, and she opens the door and lets those dogs out. And they run around the side of the house, coming running over there, and you could tell we are big blue dogs. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I looked at Tanner and he had tears coming down. Oh, oh, sweet. So the rock clan now is going to have five, I am going to have five grand sons, and still only that first one, the granddaughter. Oh. But, but Malia's trying to twist her husband's arm because they have two boys and she wants a girl so bad. <laughs> so you stay tuned, know. there's more to be good. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. This is our last Sunday here. Oh, okay. uh, we'll be returning to Georgia leaving tomorrow morning. But I wanted to thank everyone for all the, the, the friendship and the fellowship that we've always enjoyed at this church. I call it my mother church because I was raised in this church. But we will be returning to St. Mark United Methodist Church in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, I, uh, we ask for your uh, mercy and for safe travels. And uh, we will hope to see you perhaps next summer. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> safe travels for all. <clears throat> Sherry? Um, prayers of joy for the brief rain that we got um, last evening. Um, it helped put out, if not subside, the wildfire in Bridger. Nice. Near Bridger. The one that's in the priors. Okay. Carl? First, those people that know Bill called us. Yes. Yeah. We'll probably keep him and his family in the prayers. For those that don't know, he was uh, run over by a tractor at a bail wagon. Um, and it kind of tore him up a little bit. He's got several operations and a long time to recuperate. Anybody else? We would also like prayers for Verna. And also very thankful for the rain we got. We actually had puddles when it was done. <laughs> Is there anything else? Let us pray. The peace of Christ is not an easy peace. This is not just embracing those we love. This is a peace facing hard truths, forgiving huge sins, and uniting with all. May we extend the peace of Christ to all, the peace Christ has extended to us. And may we always pray the way he taught us to pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let the kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Activities to help others, to be kind to others, and to, of course, give our tithes. Our offering plate is in the foyer. And thank you for all of your time, your efforts, and your tithes. <laughs> Now our prayer of confession. 
challenging Christ. Forgive us when we avoid your hard truths. Grant your mercy when we look for the easy path and avoid the path you set before us. Guide us back to where you would have us to go. Strengthen us to face the challenge of the living, faithful lives and of following your lead. Encourage us to rejoice when we see the way forward and love us so fully that we accept your love. Help us live the love you shower on our lives that we may shower this love on others. In your love and grace we pray. Amen. Well, let us pray a silent prayer. God's face looks upon us with mercy and love. Christ's light shines through us as the image of God we are created to be. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is on page 883. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. concerning his vineyard, his chosen people. My greatly beloved had a vineyard on a very fruitful hill, and he dug and trenched the ground and gathered out the stones from it and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine press in it. And he looked for it to bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O oh inhabitant, of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard, my people, says the Lord. What more could have been done for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to bring forth grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it shall be eaten and burned up. And I will break down its wall, and it shall be trodden down by enemies. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or cultivated, but there shall come up briars and thorns. 
I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant, the plant of his delight. And he looked for justice, but behold, he saw oppression and bloodshed. He looked for righteousness, for uprightness, and right standing with God, but behold, he heard a cry of oppression and distress. In our Psalm 80, I give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned upon the cherubim of the Ark of the Covenant, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. You brought a vine, Israel, out of Egypt. You drove out the heathen nation and planted it in king. You prepared room before it, and it took deep root, and it filled the land. The mountains were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs of it were like the great cedars, cedars of God. I, Israel, sent out its boughs to the Mediterranean Sea and its branches to the Euphrates River. I, King 4, 21, 12, why have you broken down its hedges and walls so that all who pass by pluck from its fruit? The boar out of the wood wastes it and the wild beast of the field feeds on it. Turn again, we beseech you, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Visit and have regard for this vine. Protect and maintain, maintain the stock which your right hand planted, and the branch, the son, that you have reared and made strong for yourself. They have burned it with fire, it is cut down, may they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand upon the Son of Man, whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we will not depart from you. Revive us, give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine in pleasure, approval, and favor on us, and we shall be saved. And from Hebrews. By faith, the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea as though they were passing through dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted it, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had encircled for seven days, had been encircled for seven days by Joshua and the sons of Israel. By faith, Rehab, the prostitute, was not destroyed along with those who were disobedient because she had welcomed the spies sent by the sons of Israel in peace. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who by the faith that is, with an enduring trust in God and His promises, subdued kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promised blessings, closed the mouths of lions, extinguished the power of raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, became mighty and unbeatable in battle, putting enemy forces to fight. Re women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured to death, refusing to accept release offered on the condition of denying their faith so that they would be resurrected to a better life. And others experienced the trial of mocking and scourging amid torture, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. They were put to death by the sword. They went about wrapped in skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, cruelly treated, people of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and living in caves and holes in the ground. And all of these, though they gained divine approval through their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised, 
because God had us in mind and had something better for us, so that they, though these men and women of authentic faith, would not be made perfect, that is, completed in him, apart from us. Therefore, then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every incumbrance, unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily, deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us <coughs> and lets us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader <coughs> and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and is also finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He for the joy of obtaining the prize that is set before us. Endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And from Luke, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From, on, from now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Interpreting the times, he said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot. And it is. Hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I found a list of Jesus is. It coincides with the New Testament books as well as references to the Old Testament verses that coincide with the ones mentioned. Jesus is what to me? Do I feel Jesus in everyday life or just on Sundays? Does he impact my thoughts and actions every day? How I treat others? I hope I don't lose you on this rabbit trail of mine. I hope it speaks to you as it spoke to me. We start with Matthew. Matthew tells the good news of Jesus Christ. Like the other Gospels, the focus is on what Jesus did and said during the last three years of his life. The primary focus of all four Gospels is Jesus' sacrificial death and his powerful resurrection. In places of each Gospel, the writers focus on the last week of his life. Each is told differently. They speak of a different aspect of Jesus is. Matthew teaches us that Jesus is the Messiah, as foretold repeatedly in the Old Testament. One of the most obvious of these is found in Isaiah 7.14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. 
Listen carefully. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. This prophecy of the virgin is declared in Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, to be fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. All this happened to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In Mark, he is the servant king. Servant, in the biblical sense, portrays Jesus, the king, and the prophet as human, called and chosen to serve God and humanity. In Mark, numerous Old Testament texts are given to show how the significance of Jesus' arrival is. In Luke, Luke was a physician. He is speaking of Christ as the great physician, which is quite appropriate. Jesus was said to heal the sick and the poor in spirit. Jesus healed those with affliction and infirmities all through the New Testament. Jesus spoke in parables as he taught and showed the power of God as he healed. In John, he is the Son of God. He came as the divinely appointed Messiah, therefore the Son of God, often telling his disciples to listen to him. They would need his teachings and that they really did not understand who he was. He is the chosen and anointed representative to the kingdom of God. The Gospel of John makes it very clear who Jesus is. Jesus is the true light and gives light to everyone. Jesus is not only the truth, but the way to know the truth. John is the spiritual gospel. Verse 1. Chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Romans, he is our righteousness through faith. We We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus. There is no difference for Jew or Gentile. In Acts, he is our risen Lord. Just as Jesus said he would, he rose again. When Martha and Mary went to the tomb, it was empty. And as to his divine nature, according to the spirit of holiness, was openly designated to the Son of God with power and in a triumphant triumphant and miraculous way by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord. In as many different versions that there are today of the Bible, they all say the same thing. Jesus Christ is Lord. In Galatians, he is our justification. In Ephesians, he is our perfection. In Philippians, he is our provider of everything that we may need. 
In Colossians, he is our hope. But when the Bible says there is hope laid up in heaven for us believers, we should rest assured that there is hope in heaven for us. The secret is this. Colossians chapter 1 verse 22. Christ has reconciled you to God in his physical body through death to present you before the Father holy and blameless. The hope of glory is the fulfillment of God's promise to restore us and all creation. In Timothy, he is our shepherd. In the 23rd Psalm, we can picture Jesus leading us beside the still waters. The pictures of Jesus with the lamb across his shoulders, with all the angels rejoicing when just one is brought back into the fold. In Titus, he is our rewarder. Rewards are stored in heaven. In Philemon, he is our encourager. He gives us the words and courage to go on in an otherwise very scary world. In Hebrews, he is our high priest. He is greater than anyone. He is our Messiah, our Savior, the Son of God, the Son of Man, friend of sinners, to name a few. He is called our High Priest because he paid for our sins. Hebrews 7, 26 and 27. It is fitting for us to have such a high priest, perfectly adapted to our needs, holy, blameless, unstained by sin, separated from sinners, exalted higher than the heavens, who has no day by day need like those high priests to offer sacrifices, first of all, for his own personal sins, and then for those of all the people. Because Jesus met all the requirements and did this once and for all when he offered himself as a willing sacrifice. He offers redemption of sins by obtaining eternal life for all who come to God through Christ. He is the door. In James, he is our wisdom. James 1, 5 and 6. Ask for wisdom, but ask in faith. In Peter, Chapter 1, verse 4, we have a priceless inheritance that is kept in heaven. It is incorruptible, undefiled, and not fading away. <coughs> Jesus is all these things and many more. Examine your heart. Do any of these sound like your Jesus, our Jesus? Do you have more Jesus is? Share him with others. Thanks be to God for these words. Amen.
Our closing hymn is found on page 600, Wonderful Words of Life. Thank you.